Over the past five years, I've gotten to try and review dozens of VR headsets, ranging from the cheapest of cheap to the most ridiculous of $8,000 military combat simulators. But in all that time, I can easily say that the Vision Pro is the most nuanced and divisive VR headset I have ever used. And I get it. On one hand, this headset is in some ways just miles better than any of the near 50 headsets I have used in the past. And in a few particular places, it's so good that it'll have just about anybody speechless and looking at reality a little different for at least a couple seconds. But on the other hand, for every one thing the Vision Pro does better than anything else, there's something that it disappointingly is just missing or does worse. And so I know this video has taken a while, but I really want wanted to take my time to get to know this headset. And after using the Vision Pro every day, going back to using my other headsets, getting Steam VR working, and even dedicating myself to make this video in the headset, I feel I have a pretty good understanding of what the Vision Pro really is. From the very real magic that the Vision Pro provides, to the very real things that the Vision Pro just sucks at. And I also want to have a serious conversation about the Quest 3 value, and I think most importantly, what this means for the future of VR. And so, before before we get into the good and bad, let's start with the basics. I think we've all heard that the Vision Pro's hardware is impressive, but I don't think it's really been put into proper context. Almost every video I've seen has compared the Vision Pro to other headsets from the bottom up, taking the cheapest headset available and seeing how they all stack up, which is extremely valuable, and don't worry, I've dedicated a whole section to the Quest 3 in this sort of comparison. But I don't think it's entirely fair to either the Quest 3 or the Vision Pro to only look at it from this approach. They are very very different devices in different categories that just do some of the same things. And so we're going to do something a little different. I think it's better to start by looking at things from a top-down perspective, and once you see the full context from both sides, the Vision Pro just makes a little more sense, especially considering that this is legitimately the first time that this level of hardware has ever been actually available to consumers. In total, with 23 sensors including 6 microphones and 12 cameras, with eye tracking, face tracking, hand tracking, automatic automatically adjusting IPD, a LiDAR scanner, true depth camera, flicker sensor, then on top of that, throw in some of the most advanced displays ever put in a headset, those being tiny near 4K micro OLED panels, providing some of the highest resolution of any headset at three times the pixel density of a Quest 3 and seven and a half times of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. When you actually just compare the raw specifications of the Vision Pro to any other VR headset available, I think it's pretty easy to say that technically this is the most advanced VR headset that is currently available. And that's not really my opinion, it's just the raw hardware specifications. And this is kind of a big deal, because just two years ago, the only device that came anywhere close to the Vision Pro in terms of that raw hardware capability would cost you over $7,000 plus a yearly $1,000 subscription if you could even buy one. Up until now, basically all headsets in this level of hardware capability, at least sensor-wise, have been exclusively available to enterprise customers only. But then you also got to think that all these other expensive enterprise headsets also require you to have crazy powerful multi-thousand dollar computers on top of that for them to even function. While the Vision Pro, of course, has its own M2 and R1 chip that actually perform surprisingly well in benchmarks. And when you put all this hardware together and look under the hood from the developer perspective, the Vision Pro's understanding of its spatial environment is significantly more advanced and accessible than anything else out there. And I know I said I'd save this for later, but the Quest 3, for example, is often often compared to Vision Pro for its similar looking mixed reality, but when you actually look at how the headsets are processing information about their environment from the sensor array, Vision Pro simply knows a lot more about what's going on in your space. But okay. Now that we got some of the hardware context out of the way, let's talk about the good parts of actually using Vision Pro before I tear it apart a little bit. And I gotta say, one of the absolute best parts of this entire headset package is Vision OS, and it's probably the biggest component to the entire magic recipe. And after dealing with VR user interfaces for a long time, from Oculus to Steam VR to Pico to modern Quest UI, the core experience of many navigation is by far the most intuitive and I guess solid solid feeling VROS I've ever felt. Partially because of small details like shadows cast by panels that appear in your real environment, partially because of the resolution and contrast ratio of the panels, but mostly because Vision OS is entirely navigated through hand and eye tracking. And once you get used to it, you hardly even think about navigating through VR menus, which is normally one of the worst parts about VR in general. And I think the crazy part is that it's not like Apple reinvented the wheel here in terms of UI UX. Every single chance that Apple had, they just took 
existing things on iOS and macOS that already worked and applied it to Vision OS. Apps are organized just like they are on a phone, Control Center is exactly where you'd expect it, the Settings menu looks and acts just like every other Apple Settings menu. And that familiarity is something we haven't had in VR, it's easy to use. At least most of the time, because look, the software experience on Vision OS is not perfect, we'll get into its limitations a bit later, but when it works, it really works. And when you put together powerful hardware with a seamless software experience, there are a few special moments where everything comes together in a way that as a VR hardware nerd, I can't help but geek out about. And it seems like when people refer to Vision Pro anything as magical, this is what they're talking about. And I think one place where the whole package shines just is in the environments. Using the crown of the headset, you can transition your play space from full pass-through to being in a variety of pre-made, beautifully detailed scenes. And the amount of thought put into every single one of these environments is a little mind-blowing, and it might sound ridiculous, but the environments alone are arguably one of the most immersive VR experiences I have ever been in. Even the audio changes to match and replicate what the audio would probably sound like if you were in that environment. And I don't think I'll ever forget the moment I was sitting in my room at about half immersion level so I could see my room fade away into a cliff while I was still able to see my real hands because of the hand occlusion. And once I changed to the night version of the environment, the lighting of my actual physical room and real hands adjusted to the virtual environment as well. And I don't think that I'll ever forget that a fake moon seemingly shining fake light on my real arms in the fake dark gave me very real chills. It's gotta be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. But it gets a little crazier than that, and I kind of get why so many people have been using Vision Pro outside, because for a split second, it's kind of mind-bogglingly surreal to have the full experience of the real sun hitting my body and the smell of being outside, while the Vision Pro switches between these hyper-realistic environments that almost look as real as the real world. And I realize this is a small thing that a lot of people wouldn't even notice or really care about. It's just an environment with hand occlusion, with some light changes, it's basic stuff. But that's exactly the point. After testing all these different headsets, there's not a single device out there on the planet that is capable of providing that exact experience right now. Some have come kinda close, but only for a lot more money and under very specific circumstances like building an entire green room for this. And that's kinda the point of why it's important. It's basic, but Apple nailed it. But I wanna move on from environments that are cool and a little trippy, but I definitely wouldn't say it's worth $3,500 for a two second long existential crisis, I think the much more compelling argument for the price is how Vision Pro operates as a tool. And after using the headset to make this video, I kinda get it. I mean, I've got my Windows PC right here, a MacBook window over there, Discord on my left, Twitter on my right, YouTube down center, and three docs open where I'm writing the script all while sitting on a freaking lake. Oh, and I've got a full virtual synth right here for whenever I just wanna take a break. For someone that sits at a computer way too much, and also likes VR way too much, this is a ridiculous experience. It's a little overwhelming, it's way overpowered, but it's freaking awesome. I've never had this much power in one place with just a couple pinches. And I don't think just saying the Vision Pro is good at productivity really captures how powerful and different this really feels from anything else. I legitimately have the capabilities of my phone, an iPad, MacBook, PC, all put together in a way that breaks down every wall of computing that has ever existed. And after really getting into a workflow, it's pretty easy to see that the Vision Pro is a powerful tool that's fun to use and provides a very real reason for me to put on a headset every day other than Beat Saber in VR chat. And I'm gonna be honest, the hardware on the Vision Pro isn't revolutionary. A lot of it isn't even proprietary. We've seen headsets with similar sensor packages. These beautiful displays aren't even from Apple, they're Sony displays and we'll probably see them in future headsets. And the software itself isn't really that special either, but when you put everything together, that's whenever it becomes even close to revolutionary. But I think we've talked enough about the good stuff. Now is where things get interesting, because the Vision Pro is far from perfect. So 
let's talk about the bad. And I'm just gonna start with the least of the bad and progress to the terrible. So first off, I have had a few issues with eye tracking and hand tracking just not working as expected. 98% of the time, it's smooth sailing, but that 2% of the time when I pinch and clearly interact with something I was not looking at just gets old pretty fast. On top of that, you may have noticed that in a few full-on VR games that are available for Vision Pro, like Synth Riders, that the hand tracking just looks awful. Now, this isn't because the hand tracking isn't accurate. The headset knows full well where your hands and fingers are. Instead, it's because the hand tracking is limited to run at just 30 hertz. And without developers adding some sort of significant smoothing, it just looks and feels bad. It's almost like Apple didn't want people to use hand tracking to emulate controllers. And I will say, as great as the UI is, I occasionally really miss the option of having controllers. The operating system also experiences a few annoying hiccups, like apps won't download occasionally requiring a full system restart, which is pretty annoying, but I expect a lot of this will be patched pretty quickly. There have already been a lot of updates that have fixed other issues. There are, however, a few things that can't just be fixed over the air. And while the Vision Pro may have beautiful displays with a super high resolution and great contrast ratio, Apple still operates under the same laws of physics that every other headset manufacturer does, which means that the one really ugly side of micro OLED displays is still present here. There is high persistence. This is a common trait of micro OLED displays in VR headsets, like the big screen beyond. If you put the brightness up really high, it leads to a slight motion blur-like effect, which may not be a big deal for everyone. I, for example, notice it, but it's only occasionally annoying. Some people, though, are really sensitive to high persistence, and it's something that immediately triggers motion sickness. And there's so much persistence with the Vision Pro that I'm a little surprised Apple even shipped it like this. But it also shows me that micro OLEDs still have a long way to go. And speaking of laws of physics, the Vision Pro is just a very heavy device to put on your face. Now, I've used this thing for 10 hours straight, and it's doable, especially if you've built up some VR endurance. But it's definitely not the most comfortable thing in the world. And while the Vision Pro does come with two head straps, a solo knit and dual loop, and people have found the dual loop strap to be a bit more comfortable, I found that it personally causes much worse hotspots during long sessions than the solo band. And I have a feeling that the second strap was very much so an afterthought after complaints. But I think the most frustrating thing about Vision Pro is that this is, at least on paper, the most powerful, technologically advanced VR headset that you can buy right now as a consumer, just looking at the specifications. And it's got arguably one of the best user interfaces out there for VR, and it could potentially do so much. But like a cruel, mean joke, as of now, some of the main applications I have to choose from are Fruit Ninja, Cut the Rope, and a bunch of timer applications. And if you ever thought that the Quest Store is just full of a bunch of mobile games, the Vision Store is quite literally just full of a bunch of mobile games. And that's not to say that there aren't a few really great hidden gems available. Animog is a surprisingly powerful spatial synthesizer that's a blast. And Black Box is a must-play mixed reality game for anybody that likes this sort of stuff. And that's also not to say that just having iPad apps are bad either. Sitting on the couch playing Slay the Spire with hand and eye tracking while having Discord to the side and iMessage open is awesome. And I do think Apple absolutely did the right thing by making basically the entire app store available on day one. But again, it's a little painful that after watching eight years of VR app development and seeing what the Vision Pro really is capable of, that it's not being used anywhere close to its full potential. And that's entirely because of Apple's own decisions. And it's also their reluctance to really embrace where things are at right now. And don't get me wrong, the hand and eye tracking on Vision Pro is super powerful. And I wish that I could navigate every VR UI using this sort of hand and eye tracking. But Apple ignoring any sort of motion controllers today is sort of like if they removed the headphone jack before the iPhone was already popular. It's pretty short-sighted and does nothing besides fracture the already fractured VR user base and its developers. And I think the empty, barren app store is proof enough that this probably wasn't the smartest decision, at least if they were ever going for a prosperous, cross-pollinating ecosystem. But then again, we all know that that's just not the Apple way. And I think really the most 
disappointing part of the Vision Pro is that it could be so much better than it already is. It could be a legitimate platform for developers to port and bring all their stuff to that they've been working on for years. And it could be more than an amazing productivity tool, but also an amazing immersive device for these immersive experiences. But instead, at least for right now, it's only one of those things, and it's a little confusing. And you know what, while I'm here, I got one more gripe. Look, I kind of understand why the Vision Pro is $3,500 between the displays, power of the onboard compute and build materials, and the sensor package itself. If you directly compare the Vision Pro to similarly spec'd headsets, the Vario XR4 for example, the Vision Pro actually weirdly starts looking like a decent deal. But I have to ask, Apple. Why the hell are you charging $200 for a replacement face gasket and $300 for a developer USB connection? It's things like this that make it really hard for anyone to justify buying or even developing for this headset. And it's just kind of sad to see. But let's move on to something pretty positive before we talk about the Quest 3 and my final conclusions. So I mentioned earlier that I did get SteamVR working with the Vision Pro. And right now, even in its early state, as long as you have base stations and knuckles already, SteamVR on the Vision Pro is perfectly playable just like on any other headset, which is huge. And I will say right now, it's a pain in the butt to set up. I mean, you have to build the ALVR app in Xcode yourself, push it to the headset, set with a developer account, and then at the end of it you have to use OVR PlaySpace Combiner to sync the controllers with the headset, but SteamVR does in fact work. But I also gotta say that Apple deserves none of the credit for opening up this possibility. SteamVR working on Vision Pro is entirely thanks to the open source community and a few passionate people. So now I get to finally talk about the Quest 3 and some of the future of VR. And warning, this is about to get a little spicy with some hot takes. Now, We've already compared everything in the VR industry from the top down, but now let's go from the bottom up. Because I think in some ways what Meta has done for $500 is just as impressive as what Apple has done for $3,500. And just to put this into perspective, for the same price as a 512 gigabyte Vision Pro, you could buy a Quest 3 and build a full PC with an RTX 4090, Ryzen 7800 X3D, 64 gigabytes of RAM, a motherboard, a two terabyte NVMe, a case, power supply, cheap monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Look, the Quest 3 is by far the best value VR headset that has ever existed, and I don't think anybody's challenging that. And it's true, the Quest 3 is perfectly capable of doing a lot of the things that I and a few others have raved about on Vision Pro. I mean, it can watch videos and movies, it's got pass-through, a browser, Steam Link, virtual desktop, immersed. Yeah, it's lacking the raw hardware and specifications and eye tracking, but it can do a lot of the same things. However, one thing that is just hard to really explain is that it wasn't until I actually got to use the Vision Pro for a long period of time and then come back to the Quest 3 that it became extremely clear that pretty much everything the Quest 3 does poorly is what the Vision Pro excels at. And it just happens to be that the Vision Pro excels at all of the basics. It gets the fundamentals down really well. And I'd say that probably the best investment Meta could make right now is to buy a Vision Pro for every single one of their UI UX engineers working on Quest and have them steal all the good things to completely rebuild the Quest UI. And look, this isn't even saying anything bad about Meta. I don't blame them. They've been building VR headsets in a complete vacuum for about a decade now. They've had no one to bounce off of and no one to really call competition, but they do have it now. And I think this is the most exciting part of Vision Pro. Of course, as a hardware geek that's obsessed with trying every VR headset I can and then analyzing it, I can say without hesitation that the Vision Pro is an awesome VR headset. And I think it's the golden standard for where displays, resolutions, ease of use, productivity, hardware and software all need to be. And as a whole package, this seems to be a threshold where VR shifts from being a plaything to being a really viable tool. But that being said, unless you plan on using the Vision Pro as a tool, then in no way would it ever be worth $3,500. In the same way a Vario XR3 just also isn't worth $7,000 a couple years ago. But I do think we're moving in the right direction. And when you look at it from both ends of what the entire VR industry has to offer, the Vision Pro on the high end and the Quest on the realistic attainable end, they are both 
prime examples of the fact that we're going in the right direction. And they're not even in direct competition. They are two devices in two different segments that clearly target two different audiences, but they do complement each other in a way that we haven't had before in this industry. There's a lot of things that the Vision Pro is missing that the Quest 3 is great at, but there's also so many things that the Quest 3 can learn from the Vision Pro. And it really makes me think, what does VR really need in the immediate future? Is it big 60 hour long AAA games? Is it higher resolutions or better processors with better comfort and lower prices? Or is it just to get the basics of a VR user interface right to where it feels good? And I think if there's one thing that I've learned from using Vision Pro is that it's gonna have to be a combination of all of them. And I'm really sorry to say it, but Vision Pro, while technically impressive, just is not there yet. And it's just as far from the mark of being a perfect headset that does it all as the Quest 3 is, just in totally opposite directions. And it may sound a little ironic, but using the Vision Pro, probably the best VR headset I've used yet, made me really realize that we've still got a long way to go before we actually hit that mark. Before we have that piece of hardware that kind of does everything we want it to. We quite literally are only just getting started. But I'm gonna go into Unity and Xcode and see what this thing's really capable of. There's still a lot to explore and I hope I can share that with you guys. And so, thank you so much for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters for making this review possible. I still have one kidney left, thanks to you guys. Until next time, much love, thrill out.